We've got it managed locally. Give us a call. This is Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. SoCal sports talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. What's happening? It is a Wednesday afternoon. This is Kaplan and crew from the seven mile casino studios with Grande and the Brown man. And I want to jump right in because I must say that Alex, you'll appreciate this last night. I was um, I was not at home. I was not sitting in front of a television. I was not watching sports last night, but I got a text from my daughter who goes to Boise State, and she's got a bit of a cold right now, negative COVID test, but she's got a bit of a cold. And she said, hey, I, I really wanted to go to the Boise State, San Diego State basketball game tonight on campus, but I'm not going because I'm, I'm coughing and I don't want any, but you know, like nowadays, if you have a cough, or if you dare sneeze in public, like, you know, the whole world gives you a dirty look, like you've done something really, really wrong. Back in the old days, you'd sneeze. People go, hey, God bless you. Nowadays, you sneeze. People are like, get out of here. What are you doing here, pal? So my daughter, who goes to Boise State last, uh, told me last night, she wanted to go to the San Diego State-Boise State game, but she didn't want to cough all over people. So I was not in front of my television last night to watch a San Diego State-Boise State game. Grande, you sent a text yeah. probably halfway through the game, and you were like, Who's calling this game? And I was like, oh, man, I'm not not sitting at home watching San Diego State, Boise State. And then I saw what happened where the Aztecs lose this game by a point late. Just fill me in. My my San Diego State basketball knowledge and um, even just my exposure to the team this year, I'm like way, way, way behind. So fill me in what happened last night with San Diego State basketball. Well, let me first off address the announcer portion of this. I said, hey, I texted Andrew Catalan because he's calling the state game. I said, let's have him on because he also called the Juwan Howard punch. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, though, my fiance fell asleep super early and she was on the couch. So I had the game super, super, super low. Mm -hmm. Not Andrew Catalan calling the game. Mm -hmm. Very embarrassed last night because Andrew's it's like, hailing hey. outside. He's like, hey, not me. Um, but. I'm calling San Diego State later this year. Uh, give me a call. Then. <laughs> so I don't know who's calling the game yesterday, but it wasn't Andrew Catalan. Okay. Wait. So, Browner, you're saying that it's it's hailing outside down in North Park? Oh, is that what he said? Yeah, man. Really? Like right now, middle of the day, it's hailing? It was quick, though. It's over already. Can you guys just – let's just time out for one second. We were talking San Diego State. Give me one second. The weather yesterday and today, the amount of, like, crazy rain – that comes in, pounds on us, and then moves its way out. Yesterday, there were at least two rainstorms that happened. I want to say one was around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. The next one was more like 6.30-ish last evening. And then um, even late, I would say like maybe 7.30 last night, I was getting poured on. And then this morning, I woke up and just debris everywhere from the wind and the rain that happened overnight that I slept through. I didn't even hear it. Didn't feel it. Nothing. But what, what the hell's going on all of a sudden? Cause I tell you right now, I mentioned this the other day that on Sunday, the first day without football, I walked for 12 and a half miles on Sunday. I had no, no football to watch, no games to look at on my phone. No, no scores to follow. Uh, no Twitter to follow along with what's going on news around the NFL. So I walked for 12 and a half miles on Sunday. It was summertime. It was 75 degrees and sunny, perfect blue skies. What has happened here in the last two days? Anybody have a weather report? No, man, it was it just rained. hailing for a couple of minutes. Hail, dude. Hail. Oh, oh hell man. no. All the hail coming. Down. Hail, man. Oh, hell. You ask what the hell is going on with the weather. Well, it's falling from the sky, so. Mm. be careful out there people mm, gotcha all right we I don't leave my house i do have a, a very you know like weird ability to look outside uh -huh. like okay it's not raining put my dog on the leash take her out so she can go poop and as soon as she gets out there it starts raining on us mm -hmm. that happened twice yesterday Ooh. i literally like get on my balcony i'm like okay no rain look around okay cool let's go strap her up Let's go. I'm not wearing any rain gear. She's not wearing any rain gear. Nothing. We go out there. She gets to like this grass across the street. I'm like, all right, let's go handle your business. And then bam, dude, we came in here. Looked like I just gave her a bath yesterday, <laughs> last night. Like literally no joke. 830. 
clear. I'm like, okay, like I see, like you can, you know, you could at night, you could even still see clouds. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, there's no clouds right now. Let's go. And it's freezing out there. It's windy, but I'm like, let's just go real quick. Go out there. As soon as I step outside, I'm telling you, dude, as soon as I open the front gate, Brown has seen it. Boom. Comes down on us. I'm like, you know what? We're out, we're out here. You got to go. Let's go. We're standing out there. I'm wearing a regular hoodie. I'm wearing basketball shorts. She's, you know, nothing on her. We come back in. I, literally, she's drenched, dude. I got to get a towel out and the blow dryer out because it looks like I just, like, gave her a bath. Wow. Twice yesterday. Damn. Yeah. Twice. I so know. that's what's happening. Like, it's like these micro weather Storms. things where... Yeah, it'll like go from like block to block. It's it's crazy. I wonder if you could pull up on a map. You know how like if you go to weather.com or you know, you go to these kinds of websites, they have like um the, the precipitation uh, amount app. of rain that well, has fallen in the neighborhood. Yeah, well but but they also they'll have like a map, right? And you'll see the Southern California coastline, and then they'll have like the green clouds the Doppler radar. Yeah, that are that are going and then you're just looking, it's like patchy here, patchy, and then just rain will just come flying out of the sky. Like, but not like San Diego or SoCal rain. I'm talking like New Orleans, South Florida, like real rainy places, you know, places where they it just opens up and you get drenched. That was what's happening here. The that last was yesterday, man. Yeah. Yes, it was pretty bad. Yeah. It was, it was a I like that the no go ahead. No, you go ahead. I like that the iPhone <laughs> app has the weather map now too. <laughs> Okay, okay. When you go to maps. What, what's going on with the iPhone all of a sudden? I I didn't have my iPhone oh, plugged in last night. I wake man. up this morning. It says to me, hey, we didn't update your phone because it wasn't plugged in. And yet there are so many things on my phone that look different. So different, you know? Dude, you got to. The, the iPhone is a very tricky piece of material, okay? They want to follow you and they want to hear everything you say. So when you, when. They released a YouTube. So there's a YouTube guy who I follow whose name I can't remember at this time. Shocker. He tells you every time they update a phone, what you should and shouldn't turn off. What is helpful, what isn't helpful. They're basically just pinning different ways to track you. Like literally, that's why they, they had so many complaints. They had to come out with a feature on the app that says ask not to track because all your apps were tracking you right. and listening to you. That's why the new yeah, phones. Know, I told you about that. They know where you park your car. They know where you live if you've never even put your address in your phone. Like, it, it's you got to pay attention to these phones now, man, because you think they put a chip in the shot. They got they got you followed on this phone 100 percent. Yeah, there's no doubt that you're being followed um, on your phone. Uh, in fact, just the other day I was mentioning to a friend of mine, I said, hey, um, yeah, I, I made an appointment with a, with somebody on their Calendly. Do you guys know what Calendly is? No. No. You never heard of Calendly? So no, Calendly is that uh, that meeting app have issues. Slacker, Slack, yeah. Oh, Slack, Slack, Slack did yeah, have issues. It's got, yeah, it's got problems now. I don't know what the problems are. I use it every day, and I I actually have like the upgraded version of Slack where you can do video conferencing on it so that you don't have to go to Zoom. But I I said to a friend of mine the other day, I go, yeah, I made an appointment with so and so on their Calendly, and this friend of mine said, well, what's Calendly? And I said, Calendly is something that when somebody emails you and they say, hey, you know, you want to make a meeting, let's get together. Here, click on my Calendly link. And then it'll say, okay, Scott is available on this day between these times. So then you say, okay, I'll take one to 130. You click on it. And then it sets up the meeting. So then it comes to my calendar. It goes to that person's calendar. So the person whose Calendly it is, they know that from one to 130, I signed up for a meeting with them and then it produces the zoom link so that we both have it so this friend of mine who i said wait you've never heard of calendly and he said no never and within like seconds of us talking about this he went on to twitter and on his timeline there was an ad for calendly you know so they listening dude they are listening to everything there's they are listening and uh there's all this artificial intelligence and they've made the phone so awesome that if you turn off those features, it's basically now just a cell phone. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's pointless if you turn off the features that actually make the phone great, like being able to hear you, uh, the directions, like everything that made the phone cool. If you turn those off, you might as well carry a flip phone. <laughs> I mean, you don't know to, you don't notice it when you download a new app and it tells you, like, all it requests all these things first. Right. 
Can we access your contacts? Can Bluetooth. we send you notifications? Can we use your location? Can we mm -hmm. get your Bluetooth? You got to say no or yes to most of these things for every single app. And so some you get apps an app, don't work if you say no. You can get an app that's literally just like solitaire. And it's still asking you, can we send you notifications? Can we ask for your contacts? Because someone owns that solitaire game that is collecting data. It's no secret. Hmm. It's no secret. Yeah. Frequently used locations on your phone is the most, it's the scariest thing. And Ooh, most, yeah, yeah, I would say 95% of people don't even know that it's on right Turn now. Turn it off, man. Right. That's why when it says yeah. allow or don't allow, I always click don't nope. allow. It's more than that. It's layers, to, it's layers that. to the way they track you, man. Yeah. yeah. Do you know how like deep you got to get into like just to find this thing? You got to settings, privacy, location services, all the way down to system services, <laughs> then all the way down there to significant locations. Mm -hmm. You got to do a face ID to get in there. And then bam, 70 records. I've been to 70 places since December 29th. And it knows exactly where, when, and what time. Wow. Wow. Well, this conversation all began with San Diego State basketball, and somehow, I don't know how. No, it began with hail. Oh, hell no. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it sort of started with San Diego State basketball, kind of. That's at least where I plan on starting. Anyway, hey, look, um, with Grande and the Brown Man, this is Kaplan and crew from the 7 Mile Casino Studios, 7milecasino.com. So, so, Alex, tell me what happened. Because So last night, I want to just say something really quickly. Um, last night, I went to the belly up. I had a friend who lived an amazing life. Unfortunately, though, it was a short life, 50 years old. And um, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it right now. And um, she she had breast cancer. She battled it, beat it, it came back, it spread, it got worse. Um, and it, it just cancer, you know? Uh, everybody here who's watching and listening, everybody has dealt with cancer in their life at some point or another. And so it's just, it's just a tragic situation when you lose somebody that young. And, you know, I was at her memorial last night because her aunt literally on her deathbed, her name was Carrie McReynolds, by the way, one of the biggest San Diego Charger fans of all time, used to, you know, go to Charger games wearing t-shirts that say, you know, Raiders suck on the back. And they weren't even playing the Raiders. I mean, it's just hardcore San Diego. And when the Chargers moved, I would be like, Carrie, you got to give up on the Chargers now. You can't be a Charger fan. She said, no, I can't. I can't give up on my team. You know, I know that they left my city, but I can't give up on my team. And so last night we had this memorial uh, for her, and it was just a party, which is precisely what she wanted because she loved life, this girl, and she loved to party and have fun. And her closest friends were there, and her relatives were there, and we hired this um, Rolling Stones tribute band who came down from L.A., and they rocked the house and people were partying on Tuesday night like it was New Year's Eve because that's what she would have wanted, you know, and that's what she asked for. She said, I want there to be a celebration of my life. It must be at the belly up. It must have a Rolling Stones tribute band and everybody must come and get loose. And that is what happened last night. So that's where I was. And it was an emotional thing because, you know, when you have a friend that you're close with and listen. This girl, when I was going through some of the darkest times of my life in 2014, with my marriage falling apart and everything, this person was there for me. You know, she was a super close friend to me. And uh, frankly, if I'm being honest, I wasn't as good a friend back because when she was going through her stuff, you know, I was I was on to other things in life. Um, and I'm just being honest about it. But man, we had great times. And um, I took my girlfriend with me last night. I took Rachel to this memorial and she's like, I am so glad I'm here. I would have loved this woman. You know, it's uh, just a lot of memories were coming back. So so here's my point. I didn't see the San Diego State Boise State basketball game last night, Grande. You said you texted Andrew Catalan thinking that he was the play by play announcer last night. Catalan comes back to you and says, that's not me, bro. So, yeah, OK, I don't know who nice was calling it. the game because I didn't see it. But tell me what happened, because San Diego State. This is not from what I can gather. You tell me. I mean, unless they win the Mount West Conference basketball tournament, they're not going anywhere this 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 postseason, right? Well, shaping up to possibly they could be heading somewhere. You know, they were on a five game win streak. They they really have been playing very well. Um, but I would say last night's loss probably is going to knock them out. If whatever remote chance they were getting votes again for a top twenty five. And yeah, last night they lost uh, 58, 57. I think the most disappointing thing is they had a one point lead with 12 seconds to go. Uh, their best player, Matt Bradley on the line and he missed both of them. Mm -hmm. And 
Boise State got the ball back. There was a very controversial tripping call. I don't think it was tripping. Whether you think it's a foul or not, maybe, but it's definitely not tripping. And the Boise State player who shoots 60% from the season made both. And that's how the Aztecs lost. So, um, yeah, man, it was uh, it was very disappointing to watch. It was one of those games where the offense was not clicking whatsoever. And, you know, they fought back. But brutal way to lose when your best player misses two free throws at the line. Wow. Wow. That's pretty amazing. I mean, listen, it happens, right? I mean, we saw LeBron James miss two free throws. It was a couple – was about a week and change ago. They were playing Golden State. Does that sound right to you, Browner? Where, uh, yes. where I think I think the Lakers were down by three. LeBron got fouled from beyond the three-point line, went to the free throw line, and I think missed the first free throw, then made the second, and then had to intentionally miss the third. But you're like, you're LeBron James. It was a good James. miss, too. The third one was a real good miss. Yeah, but you're LeBron James. You have to hit these free throws. And Unless you're LeBron James. I mean, hey, Matt Bradley's an, I think Matt Bradley's like a what, 81% free throw shooter. Just missed both, man. Like it's it's brutal, dude. Like college that's athletes. the game that the Aztecs, that's the game that the Aztecs should have stole because they were trailing pretty much most of the time in the second half. Mm-hmm. I'm and never surprised. They weren't doing much. I'm they never, weren't doing much. I'm never surprised when a college athlete fails at something. Never surprised. Those are very tense situations. They 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 could any in I don't call that choking. When a kid does something like that, mm-hmm. I don't call that choking because those situations are very, very difficult for young athletes to handle. He's not a professional athlete, he's a college athlete, so I never I never jump on kids about that. I was I was so bored last night, I was watching that game. <laughs> yeah. Your life must be hard right now. Like for me, when the football am, season man. ends, I go into that like football postseason, like I don't know what to do with myself because I don't have Monday night covered. I don't have Thursday night covered. I don't have all day Sunday covered and I don't have Sunday night football covered. And then I don't have all my football discussions all week long. So I go into that football postseason sort of sporting depression, if you will, you know, uh, where I have time back in my life and I'm like, I'm not even sure what to do with it. Browner, you are able to immediately turn right into the NBA Mm-hmm. I don't have that luxury because all I really care about is following the Lakers and their storylines. I don't even really care about the rest of the league the way you do. But to not have the NBA because of the all-star break right now, you were so bored you found yourself watching San Diego State, Boise State, huh? And I only really watch top five college basketball. So like Duke, Gonzaga. Uh, I watch Michigan because of Jamal Howard. But other than that, I, Kentucky, Auburn because they've got Jabari Smith. Arizona's got a great basketball team. They've got no prospects. I haven't seen a second of them play. And so I turn on my TV and YouTube TV tells me, hey, San Diego State's playing. I'm like, oh, I mean, I guess. <laughs> turn it on. I was wildly disappointed by what I saw. Yeah, you know, college. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't watched as much as I normally do with San Diego State basketball just because, I mean, it's been such a weird year. They, they, they yeah. played so, many, so much less games than most teams in the Mountain West because of COVID mm-hmm. that I just kept, had a hard time getting into it. And, you know, like seeing these guys, I'm like, oh, yeah, like forgot this guy was still on the team. And you're like, so I'm getting familiar with it. I'm getting ready for March because I'm going to go all in. Scott, request your boy don't need those front row tickets on Friday for San Jose State. This Friday? <laughs> this Friday, yeah. 8 p.m. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Yeah, you don't need you those. I get, I'll probably be able to hook you up. Because I was looking at buying some tickets last night. I was like, hold up. I got number 19 on my team over here. This guy <laughs> can hook me up, dude. You know what's funny, though, is that college basketball – I will turn on a television and like ESPN and ESPN two will both have college basketball at the same time. Like yet yeah, last night, I want to say like Florida was playing Arkansas. And then I don't remember who there was a big 10 game. Also, I don't remember who was playing. Um, and I looked at both of these games and I was like, not neither of these games interest me in any way, you know? And I, I looked at the mm-hmm. guy and it was like number 20 Arkansas recently defeated so-and-so and like, you know, they're trying to sell you on why it's a big game. And ESPN and ESPN2 both have college basketball on. And frankly, I'm not that interested in any of these games. I cannot stand SEC college basketball. Ooh. I, I, there's, there's something about it. I'm like, it's good. I am not going to watch Auburn versus <laughs> Arkansas. <laughs> right. Maybe in comparison yeah. to what he's used to watching between yeah. San Diego State and Boise State, he doesn't want to see those kinds of good teams play from the SEC. They don't want to see the number one pick in the draft play. Yeah, no, don't mm-hmm. want to see that. Yeah. Give me mm-hmm. this kid who can't no. make a free throw. 
SEC will will they get me on football? They're not gonna get me on basketball. Mm-hmm. All right. To be honest with you guys, yeah. I can't watch any college basketball. Yeah, I'm saying I really can't be. I, I'm like, seriously, I'm I can't saying. be bothered to watch like Duke, North Carolina. Could care less. Yeah, I mean, maybe like, that's I, what honestly, it was. Maybe dude, it was an ACC game. Yeah, honestly, could care I'm less about college I, I basketball. And listen, I'm going into the NCAA tournament this year, and I'll fill out all Blind. my brackets, and I will know nothing. I won't know Blind. names. I won't know who's a prospect. I will. I will literally just go by either seating or like. You know, school history or whatever. I Colors, will go in. Yeah. Mascots. Yeah, I, will, I will literally. Pro- hey, I'll probably do better with my brackets going in completely probably. blind rather than acting mm-hmm. like I know what I'm talking about. Hey, um, speaking of acting like you know what you're talking about, listen, um, I don't know a whole lot about pest control, but what I do know is is that I call Corky's Pest Control and they handle everything. Okay, they are the experts. If you've got an ant problem, they'll fix it. If you have a termite issue, they will take care of that. And they've got the best four-year guarantee in the industry, including the best prices. If you've got a rat problem or a mice problem at your house, they'll fix that too. I don't have to be an expert. I don't want to be an expert. I got Corky's. They're the experts. Call 1-800-901-1102. Corky's. All right. I was not a very enthusiastic Corky. Stick around, everybody. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man, and we got a ton we want to get to on a Wednesday afternoon. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Dominating the SoCal radio airwaves for over 20 years. Join Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner for Kaplan and Crew every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. It doesn't matter what your background is and where you come from. If you have dreams and you have goals, and that's all that really matters. I owe a lot to Charlie. When you black, it's not a movement. It's a lifestyle. This is who we are. The Rising. Proudly brought to you by Subaru of El Cajon. An extraordinary experience for everyone. We were the first. We carry the fire that began civilizations. And then we built them. We strengthened a nation. And then we fought for it. We are scientists, poets, and lawmakers. We are artists, leaders, and warriors. And as we gaze toward tomorrow, we leave an indelible mark on the past. Black History Month on Your View is proudly brought to you by Subaru of El Cajon, an extraordinary experience for everyone. Main streets are the heart of our communities, where we connect with our neighbors, support local businesses, and share new adventures. Main Street Living celebrates all of this, bringing you uplifting stories with guests from across the country and your community. Main Street Living covers what's important to you today, from our street to your street. Join Cheryl, Danielle, and Quincy for Main Street Living, Mondays at 9 on Your View. I'm Lex Gillette, five-time Paralympic medalist, four-time world champion, and world record holder in the long jump for totally blind athletes. Running and jumping without your eyesight is one of the most incredible feelings out there. When I leave the ground, though, to, to jump and soar through the air and eventually land in the sand, that is my way of defying gravity. Big breath, get tight. Celebrating black history is very important, but I think that it it certainly extends beyond just these 28 days. We need to get to a space where we are making this country a, a better space to live in. At the end of the day, it's not our eyes that ultimately determine success. It's our ability to see that vision, to develop that plan, connect with the right people, and do everything in your power to bring that vision into fruition. Prospect Home Finance is a mortgage company. We specialize in residential refinances and home purchases. So Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, if you're going out looking for a pre-approval, 
uh, to buy a new home, meet with the realtor. We would help you facilitate that and walk you through the process from, from A to Z. We specialize in getting homeowners loans for their dream home, but we also do more than that. So today we came down to Ocean Beach, uh, partnered up with Surfrider, and had some team members come down here from Prospect, all pitched together, and had quite a bit of trash to clean up. It's really heartening to see people come out and really care for the waterways. It was great getting out here, and we're gonna do it again soon. We're always looking for ways to give back to the community of San Diego. So if you have any ideas or uh, need any help or support in any way, visit us at uh, homefinance.com. Listen to The Mike Greenberg Show, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Greeny brings his unmatched depth of sports knowledge, fun, and entertainment back to ESPN on a daily basis. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. Explore the Southwest lifestyle, the culture, the music, the food, y más. Join hosts J.R. Cardenas and Vanessa Ramirez on Subida. Welcome to 2022. Did you make a New Year's resolution? We have the top 10 most popular and our advice on the next Suvida. Watch Suvida Sunday night at 7 on Your View and YourView.com. Hollander Dental is unique because we have been serving the Carlsbad community for over 25 years. We have a very spacious office with ample parking and state-of-the-art technology. The office has been uh, newly renovated, so all the equipment and facility is brand new. Any patient visiting Hollander Dental can expect to be taken care of at every step of their visit. With care and love and support, so when we're going through tough times as dental work is and can be, they make it easy for us as patients. Investing in your smile and your overall dental health in the long run will help you save money by preventing other medical conditions. I would absolutely recommend Hollander Dental. I do recommend Hollander Dental to anyone I know who needs something done. Here's Kaplan Accrued tonight's 60 second time out with Haley Stasiak. College baseball is back. Last weekend, University of San Diego baseball got the series win against Oregon to open up their 2022 season. It was a solid start to the first season for the Toreros under new head coach Brock Unricht. The Toreros won three of four on the weekend. They got a dominating win in the opener, 11 to one. Then on Saturday, a strong performance from sophomore pitcher Bryson Motts and a three RBI game from sophomore outfielder Dustin Allen lifted USD to a 10-4 win. On Sunday, the Toreros got the comeback win against the Ducks, 5-4. And then to round out the weekend, it was a tough loss in the finale on Monday night. Oregon's offense was able to turn up the heat, getting the win 21-11. USD will play in the Tony Gwynn Classic this weekend. They'll take on UNLV on Friday and Sunday, Fresno State on Saturday. That's your 60-second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan Crew tonight. Kaplan Accrued tonight's 60-second timeout is presented by Your View. Prospect Home Finance, San Diego's mortgage leader, is celebrating 15 years of happy clients. HomeFinance.com is the go-to resource online or on your mobile device to discover your best home loan options. Hi, I'm Jason Bondrack, CEO at Prospect Home Finance. I want to say thank you to all of our clients, both past and future. As part of our 15-year anniversary, we'll close your home loan in 15 business days. Start your easy home finance process today at homefinance.com. My intention is to box to win a clean fight. Convicted for draft evasion, threatened with imprisonment, Muhammad Ali is banned from fighting in all 50 states. But in Atlanta, Georgia, in October of 1970, that all changed. Matched against the top contender for the boxing crown, the greatest is back. Ali's Comeback, proudly brought to you by Subaru of El Cajon. Welcome back. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, John Browner, and Alex Padilla.
All right, everybody, this is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. If you are tuning in anywhere in Southern California on ESPN 1090 and you're listening on Terrestrial Radio, we're super stoked to have you guys along. We got you where we want you, man. You're stuck in your car. You're in traffic. Weather sucks. You and us together, all of us, we are going to hang out together. We're going to get you home safely, so stay with us. Uh, for those of you that are watching right now on YouTube, you know I say all the time, you are the heart and soul of what we do around here. Make sure you're involved in our YouTube chat because we got a lot of people discussing the stuff we're talking about, and then there's a whole separate conversation going on inside of our YouTube chat. For those that want to catch up to us tonight on television, we'll be on Channel 4 San Diego, but all the way through Southern California, San Diego, Orange County, L.A., Santa Barbara, all part of the Cox Your View Network. You can catch up to us tonight on TV between 7 and 8 p.m. And uh, as I continue to promote all the audio podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, and all the other ones that you know. So listen, um, Grande, me, you, and Brown are here. We've been talking a lot of LeBron so far this week, you know, coming out of Cleveland and the All-Star game, all the subtle and maybe not so subtle threats about LeBron's future with the Lakers. I thought you asked a really interesting question last night on your Taco Tuesday podcast on silverscreenandroll.com, and you posted it on Sided. Who will be back with the Lakers next year? LeBron, Rob Palenka, neither, or both? I voted for both, just so you know. Here is Harrison Fagan. He runs silverscreenandroll.com. And uh, Harrison, what an interesting time to be running an SB Nation site that is dedicated to the Lakers. Man, what is going on with this team? Yeah, uh, well, thank you guys for having me back, first of all. But yeah, it's been crazy. And it's like all of a sudden, you know, it's funny, like when the Lakers are rolling, it's like not really a story. Like, you know, it's like whatever. All of a sudden this week, you know, they're burning down like a dumpster fire. It's like everybody <laughs> wants to talk to me. And I get it. Like, it's this is, it's crazy. And some of it, I think, is a little bit of like, you know, content creation around the all-star break, you know, I think some of LeBron's motivations for what he actually means by some of this stuff, I'm sure we can get into, but um, you know, some of this is real and some of this is like real frustration, I think for sure. Well, uh, let's just jump right in. So, okay. The storyline is that the Lakers don't make a move at the trade deadline. And then Rob Palenka, the Lakers general manager, comes out and says, yeah, me, LeBron, and AD, we're all aligned. We're all on the same page here. They understand why we didn't make moves. They get it. And then LeBron's people, who utilize the media better than anybody, they go to all their guys, like Dave McMiniman from ESPN, and they say, Dave, that is completely false. Not true at all. LeBron and AD did not sign off on the Lakers not doing anything. So that seemed to really get this ball rolling where LeBron is no longer being so much passive aggressive, but outright aggressive. Um, what do you think about the beginning of this story? Yeah, no, I think you actually hit on exactly what really touched all this off is LeBron you know, look, this is a guy who founded an entire media platform called Uninterrupted for athletes to reach out to and speak to fans directly without having their, you know, quotes taken out of context or anything like that. This is something that he strongly believes in. And he strongly believes in people not speaking for him. Like there are very few things I think that annoy LeBron more than people saying, you know, oh, LeBron said that, you know, LeBron said this to me or putting his views or quotes from behind the scenes or anything that he may have said out in front, like without him signing off this is a guy who loves to control his own narrative and so when you have rob come out and basically say like yeah no we're all aligned and like they understand what's going on and like i'm sure lebron and ad did understand what is going on the way that rob framed it was like they were all on board with this essentially and that we're in total alignment which i don't think was entirely true like it's one thing lebron and ad can understand why the lakers did not make moves at the trade deadline and whatever doesn't mean they like it doesn't mean it was what they were pushing for and I think that when, you know, you have Rob, who's like sort of under fire for no moves at the deadline coming and saying like, oh, well, no, LeBron, AD, and I all agreed on this. Like, you know, I think that I, I, I think is what pissed LeBron off and is why you have him going on Twitter and that, you know, praising Les Snead. And then you have him going doing his all-star weekend. I'm going to praise every executive not named Rob Palinka tour. <laughs> and so, you know, he, he I, I think that's sort of where this starts from. And then it's also a little bit of LeBron, I think is 
trying to create leverage again where he doesn't really have any because he's still under contract for one more year. There's no threat of him leaving this summer. And this is basically, I think, a message to the Lakers. I don't think it's like totally false. I do think that there is some threat of him leaving eventually. But I think right now this is more smoke of like, hey, you know, we're going to play this season out or whatever. But like, I am going to make this extremely messy for you if you continue to decline my whims like you did at the trade deadline what? isn't that interesting though harrison i talked about this with alex last night it's like what does lebron expect them to do <laughs> yeah i thought that you uh, you both made great points about you know especially the part of this where lebron you know it's it's like he signed this is something that i've been thinking about a lot over the last couple days is lebron signed off on the westbrook move but then if you look at all these anonymous link leaks from the team from camp lebron from whoever it's like we're supposed to believe that no one made the westbrook decision like okay right. so like lebron didn't sign off on it ad didn't sign off on it rob didn't he just somehow ended up traded to the lakers it's amazing how that worked mm -hmm. where like no one wanted this to happen, but it ended up happening is like what we're supposed to believe from these competing media leaks. And the way that I've almost looked at the whole LeBron thing and Plinka, and it's like, why is he so mad at Rob? Like he sort of created this situation. And I, I don't even know if it's that he's mad at Rob or that he thought that like trading a first and Russ for John Wall or a pick swap or whatever was necessary would have fixed this. I think it's more of like, I am tired of people saying that I created this roster that is failing. So I'm looking for a fall guy. And I think that that is why you see the pressure being turned squarely at Rob. It's almost like in one of those like gangster movies when the bad guy like shoots someone and then kind of like puts the hand, the gun in the hand of someone else and just like leaves them there. Like, I think that's what LeBron is almost trying to do with the Russ move where he's like, he's like, Oh, I'm getting my fingerprints off this. I'm putting it in this guy's hands and you know, he's dead too. And then, Oh, look, you know, I, I didn't do make this roster or do any of that. Who, I wasn't me? I'm just a player. Yeah. Me. What do you mean? Me. I thought this, I think this whole thing by LeBron has just been something that you could see coming. If you watch LeBron James's career, at a certain point when you don't do what he says, he does this. He does this. Like the yep. idea that he would go out and praise Kobe Altman, the general manager for the Cleveland Cavaliers, when LeBron could have still been on the Cavaliers if he chose to, was just blatantly hilarious. We talked about this yesterday as well. If I'm the Lakers, I look at him, I call him and I say, yo, dude, what's the problem? What's the problem? You don't like that we outed you? Everybody knows these are your moves. Everybody knows we can't do anything unless we ask you first. Like, what's your problem? And, and that's been a real, I think, job preservation tactic by Rob Palinka in public yes. or narrative shifting tactic in public where Rob, it, it's very funny. This is something that even before all this, this is something that me and some of my like uh, fellow podcasters and whatever would joke about is every single press conference, Rob goes out of his way to talk about how he, uh, you know, he goes, he texts AD constantly about what moves they're going to make. And he's constantly in contact three-way calls with LeBron and AD about all these moves. And it's like, this is sort of like a brilliant thing that he's done from the start as plausible deniability because too. what they've created is this cloud where no one knows who made what move and so everyone can point the finger at everyone else instead of taking any accountability and you know like lebron this is why he always goes out of his way in public if you'll notice you know in his little post game pressers or his interviews or whatever he only ever talks about we when it's like a move that worked out and then if it didn't work out, it's like, well, the front office, you know, they, they, they go out and they upgrade the team and whatever. But when it's Malik Monk going off for 30, it's like, well, you know, I've been scouting Malik since he was in high school and, uh, you know, middle school, actually. And uh, I, I discovered him. I taught him how to play basketball, basically. <laughs> like, he, like, you know, we joke, like, we call him, like, uh, like Le Scout because it's like anytime the Lakers bring in a promising young player, uh. like, it's, it's LeBron is talking about how he watched all this Austin Reeves tape, you know, before Summer League and stuff like that. And it's like, what? Like, I know you're a basketball junkie. Like, I'm not going to, you know, say that there's no chance that you caught any Austin Reeves college games. Like, we know he watches a ton of basketball, but like, to act like you were sitting there cutting tape on Austin Reeves for undrafted free agency is objectively hilarious. Well, hey, but listen, if, this if, is that, like if him that's saying, the case. Telling the Heat to draft Norris Cole, they did. And he was like, I didn't say to do that. Yeah, he's like, he just, he's like, I just tweeted about how much I liked him. What do you mean? I didn't tell you to do that. Because he didn't, he didn't tell them to do that. It's all about plausible deniability and that's what most of all almost all of this stuff from the past week comes back to if if lebron james wants to take credit 
for Austin Reeves being on the Lakers because he scouted him, if he wants to take credit for THT because he he found him when he was in high school, if he wants to take credit for Malik Monk, okay, fine. Take all the credit you want. But then you got to be able to handle the blame for something like this Russell Westbrook thing because you no, know, you don't. Excuse- well, you don't, but you not don't. in his mind. No, yeah. you don't. Right. And because he hasn't, because he just leaves. All right. Well, he, but, he, Pete Carroll's the situation. He's like, I know what's coming. I'm going to bounce. I'm going to go to but, Seattle. But, but here's the way Harrison phrased it earlier. And Harrison Fagan is with us. He runs the website, silverscreenandroll.com. It's an SB Nation website. Alex Padilla, our Alex, he hosts a website. Uh, he hosts a podcast on the website. It's called Talk O Tuesday. It was published last night. He's got a partner another guy named Alex and, uh, and they go deep on a lot of these Lakers issues. But Harrison, you said it earlier, you're like, you know, um, LeBron signed off on the Russell Westbrook thing. I actually thought it was Palenka who signed off on it. Meaning it's LeBron who brings it into the office. Hey, Jeannie, um, Rob, everybody come in here a second. Listen, I got an idea. Here's what I want to do. I want to have a big three. Russell Westbrook's my guy. I assume they probably look at him and go, you know, I don't know for sure if that's going to work out. And LeBron goes, no, that's what I want. That's what we're going to do. And they were like, okay, we have no choice here. He's the boss. You know, that's, that's why he came to the Lakers because that's the deal we did with him. He gets to make these kinds of decisions. And so they kowtow to him. And when he doesn't get his way, like he didn't get his way in Miami because Pat Riley had enough clout to stand up to him. That's my perception. When he doesn't get his way, this is what he does to a team. So people criticize Ben Simmons. They criticize James Harden. They criticize all these other guys around the league who do these kinds of things. But I'm not sure everybody criticizes LeBron when he does similar kinds of things. What do you say to that? I do think LeBron gets criticism, plenty of criticism for building this roster. You can you can check my comments and uh, like the the replies to my tweets and the comments on our website for that. Um, and well, good. I'm glad people feel that way because I'll tell you this: when I'm on the radio up in LA. You know, there's a lot of, of basketball insiders and they'll say things to me like, dude, watch what you say about this. I got to face these people. And I'm like, I don't care. I mean, I, I believe LeBron James is fully responsible for this roster. Am I? So off? that's the one part that I will push back on is like the idea that Rob Polinka was an innocent bystander in the construction of this roster. Like, you know, LeBron. So what we know of the facts are that the buddy healed trade leaked that it was basically done. And then all of a sudden, like within the next 20, 30 minutes, you know, there's a report. It's like, Oh wait, actually the Lakers are getting a deal done for Russell Westbrook. And so we know that the front office had a deal for healed in place. So that was the guy that they were going to go get and then we know from reporting after the fact that lebron called them up and pushed for the russ deal he made sure he got russ on the phone with his with the owner of the washington wizards to say hey like i'd really like to go to the lakers can you make this happen and got him involved at the ownership level so this was very coordinated from the player side of it but to act like rob palinka did not want russell westbrook i also think is inaccurate and i think is a little bit of like revisionist history this is a guy who when they acquired russell westbrook got out front and wanted to have the big press conference where he got to sit right next to Russ and take credit for the move and look at this guy that I brought in. I got the third star. I got the Kobe disciple, the guy that Kobe was always telling me to bring to the Lakers and the hometown hero and all this stuff. Like Rob was very much up front and on board with this move. Now, did, was he like the final push for it? I don't know. But like to add, from what I have heard and from what has been reported, it's very clear that Rob was a, a proponent of the Westbrook deal and was not, you know, some innocent bystander that LeBron just like walked into the office and made the trade call like he was on board with this decision even if he was going to go get healed first like so I I do think that some blame has to fall on him and some blame has to fall on him where you know as the GM it's like you mentioned with Pat Riley like you have to know when the times are to push back and you have to like he's more responsible for the rest of the roster on down and some of these other signings that they missed on and you have to know when to say no to guys and when to be able to put your foot down and it's not at the trade deadline like over a John Wall pick swap or whatever it's like before you create the mess right that requires that seeming right. like a possibly appealing option which again yeah. I'm not necessarily in favor for but it's like you don't get credit for putting your foot down now like yeah. you already allowed this to happen right right we're talking to harrison fagan this afternoon uh grande and brown man i know you guys both want to jump in so i'm going to step out of the way i just want to remind everybody that this segment of kaplan and crew is being brought to us by west coast barbecue west coast bbq shop.com harrison do you like to grill i, I am a vegetarian so i'm probably not the target audience for this really vegetarian you can't yeah. take like some nice some tofu and pull, yeah you can't some roast some veggies or- yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, I mean, I live in an apartment, so I do, you know. But yeah, I, 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 when I go to my parents' house, I I do grill sometimes. All right, they sell e right. grills too. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So listen, West Coast BBQ, westcoastbbqshop.com. I know you're up in L.A. And the likelihood of you driving all the way down to Chula Vista to visit our friend Brian Bushfield and his family, probably not all that high. But you can go to their website, westcoastbbqshop.com. So if you're looking or your parents are looking, are they vegetarians also? No, they are not. Okay. So okay. they they might go. They might get it. Be in for this. They're in Orange yeah. County, so it's closer for them too. Okay, so if they're looking for a big green egg, or maybe they're looking for uh, you know uh, grilling accessories, or they're looking for really nice rubs or sauces. Uh, maybe they want, hey, you're a vegetarian. How about a nice Italian pizza oven in the back? You know, you can have a veggie pizza. All of these things are available for you at West Coast BBQ, West Coast BBQ shop. Dot com. Harrison Fagan is here from the SB Nation website, silverscreenandroll.com. They are a Lakers-dedicated website, and they are balls deep into this whole LeBron James story. Browner, you want to pick it up? I am probably the last person that you thought would say this and probably the last person to believe this. I still think they can fix this. I, I, I genuinely feel like this roster can, even if AD's in and out, if LeBron who, by the way, is the most versatile player in history. Not the best player, the most versatile player in history. If you can look at Russell Westbrook and say, listen, man, I'm going to let you have the first three quarters. Just get me to the fourth quarter. The game's in the balance. That way you get your stats. You, you, you look good. We play your way for a particular amount of time, and then you turn it over to me. There's a balance on that roster where it can work. I don't think Frank Vogel, who, by the way, none of this is his fault. I don't care what anybody says. None of this is, he's just, he's the innocent victim, okay? He's the person who gets shot in the drive-by just because he's playing in the yard. That's Frank Vogel. <laughs> they need to what get comparison. together. Between those two, they need to get together and figure out where, how they want to play. Because LeBron can't be out there trying to get 28-7-7 and because seven and seven he's chasing Kareem. If the Lakers want to actually have a chance at being productive this season, what which a lot of people think is out of the window. Harrison, what do you think? Can, can this be fixed as Browner is an optimist? And believe it or not, I am too. What do you think? So this, are we talking about fixing it this year? Yeah. Yes. Fixing it before about, the end of this year. As of yeah, Thursday. Browner, no. Browner thinks that this, that this team literally, he said this before, and I can't believe he believes, he thinks they could beat the Warriors and the Suns. Yes. Yes. <sighs> With luck, with a little bit of injury luck, or, you know, we, we don't know how Draymond or Chris Paul are going to come back. Like, I, I'm not going to say that there is a 0% chance, but I would Who say like less than Who said the Bucs will win the title? Who said the Bucs will win the title when the playoffs started last year? No one. I think there were some people expecting the Bucs to win the title. Like, I don't know that they were the favorite or anything. I'm sure some people were picking them. In Milwaukee? <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> you were just blinded by the your love of Duran and the Nets. That's why you didn't believe it. No, he That's was true. he's blinded by his love of uh LeBron and AD and Dennis mm. Schroeder, and he was a big believer in that oh, team. How the hell is that guy doing? <laughs> oh my no, god, I, I that's mean, what made that worse. Did the Lakers try and trade for him again? Yeah, yeah, they <laughs> tried to trade deal, you know, it, that's elite asset management by blameless right. GM savant Rob Polinka to like let Schroeder walk for the mid-level to Boston and then try to trade two second round picks for him instead of just like re-signing him oh on a God. cheap deal to come off the bench in the first place. So and, and giving them another mid-level contract that maybe they could have moved at the deadline because right. there were people trying to trade for Dennis Schroeder, but you know, again, they they pour all of their resources into these three giant contracts and then you know impose this artificial restriction on themselves of like making it an either or between Taylor Horton Tucker and Alex Caruso when they could have kept both, they could have tried to re-sign Dennis or something like that, and then you have some of these kind of pricier, more mid-level contracts that you can actually trade for guys instead. Of you know spending the entire deadline being like, hey, you want you know THT, none who may not exist because he hasn't played all year and a first, you know, is that and just like offering calling every GM around the league and offering that. This is uh, you, you're so right. I'll, I'll leave it on this because I know we're, we're about to run out of time here, but you're right. Like when the Lakers are winning and things are going according to plan, it's really a non story. I don't know how it is for you guys in your business, Harrison, when you're at this website, silverscreenroll.com, but my guess would be the more drama, controversy, and losing, the more visitors and engagement, et cetera, that the website probably gets. I mean, there's, there's a part of me that's rooting for LeBron to come back next year and Russ to come back next year <laughs> and for this thing to continue to spiral downward because for me, I feel like that's good for my business. 
See, I think for you guys, maybe it is, but like for us, honestly, our traffic is better when the, because all we do is talk about the Lakers. Like we don't have the option of being like, oh, here's this other story somewhere else. It's like, you know, when they're bad, like people are, get tired. I think Lakers fans get tired of hearing about it. I think fans of 29 other teams they are, love you know, loving every second of this. Yeah. And, you know, like nationwide, I think this is a beloved story probably, but, you know, <laughs> for actual, like, you know, it, nitty gritty, like down, in, you know, kind of down in the depths, Laker fans, like they're, it, our traffic is definitely better when they're winning. Although I do get to come out here and like do other, you know, media stuff and promote the site more when things are a disaster, because that's <laughs> when everybody wants to talk. I'm, I'm, you know, Scott, you never call me when the Lakers are good. This is, I'm, <laughs> he's a Laker I'm, hater. That's what <laughs> it's <this> up. <laughs> Harrison Fagan runs the SB nation site, silver screen roll.com. Our man Grande Alejandro has a podcast that is hosted there called Talk O Tuesday. If you're a Laker fan, you should absolutely go listen to this podcast. And then Alex posts a cited debate on silverscreenandroll.com asking the question, who will be back with the Lakers next year? Palenka, LeBron, both or neither. You can vote on that on silverscreenandroll.com. Harrison, it's great to talk to you. We appreciate you. And we'll talk to you real soon, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, everybody, stick around. Lots more to get to. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. You're listening to the 50,000 watt powerhouse, bringing you the new generation of radio up and down all of California with a little bit of attitude. This is SoCal Sports Talk, the all new and mightier 1090 AM ESPN radio. If you love animals, Animal Zone is for you. From rescues to animal experts, Animal Zone is fun for the whole family. Watch Animal Zone right here on your view, Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. And visit AnimalZone.org to learn more about this show. We were the first. We carry the fire that began civilizations, and then we built them. We strengthened a nation, and then we fought for it. We are scientists, poets, and lawmakers. We are artists, leaders, and warriors. And as we gaze toward tomorrow, we leave an indelible mark on the past. Black History Month on Your View is proudly brought to you by Subaru of El Cajon, an extraordinary experience for everyone. Prospect Home Finance, San Diego's mortgage leader, is celebrating 15 years of happy clients. HomeFinance.com is the go-to resource online or on your mobile device to discover your best home loan options. Hi, I'm Jason Vondrack, CEO at Prospect Home Finance. I want to say thank you to all of our clients, both past and future. As part of our 15-year anniversary, we'll close your home loan in 15 business days. Start your easy home finance process today at homefinance.com. Here's Kaplan Accrued tonight's 60-second timeout with Haley Stasiak. College baseball is back. Last weekend, University of San Diego baseball got the series win against Oregon to open up their 2022 season. It was a solid start to the first season for the Toreros under new head coach Brock Unrich. The Toreros won three of four on the weekend. They got a dominating win in the opener, 11 to one. Then on Saturday, a strong performance from sophomore pitcher Bryson Motts and a three RBI game from sophomore outfielder Dustin Allen lifted USD to a 10 to four win. On Sunday, the Toreros got the comeback win against the Ducks, five to four. And then to round out the weekend, it was a tough loss in the finale on Monday night. Oregon's offense was able to turn up the heat, getting the win 21 to 11. USD will play in the Tony Gwynn Classic this weekend. They'll take on UNLV on Friday and Sunday, Fresno State on Saturday. That's your 60 second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60 second timeout is presented by Your View. 
We are very proud to announce that the Mightier 1090 is SoCal's newest ESPN affiliate. Introducing the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. One of the largest radio stations in North America just got bigger and better. Joining forces with the worldwide leader of sports ESPN. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Today we proudly held the ribbon cuttings ceremony for our new office in La Jolla, California. Here we are in the Merrill Lynch building right in the middle of the village and really, really happy to be part of this neighborhood. This is really special to Prospect in that it almost signifies the fact that we've grown up officially. Uh, we have survived the past 15 years by being very agile. We come to this one amazing location from three separate offices. So it's fantastic having everyone under one roof. This is gonna do wonders in terms of streamlining our operations. Being able to communicate with someone down the hall as opposed to someone who's several blocks away is gonna be terrific. Our CEO, Jason Vondrak, he's a very humble person, but I know this day really, really means a lot to him in that he has led this company for 15 years and he started this business out of a studio apartment and look where we are now that's huge i think this new space signifies just endless possibilities for prospects i mean we're headquartered in la jolla but we do business all around the country so our goal is to be licensed to offer home financing in all 50 states and we're well on our way prospect home finance fast Friendly, affordable. I'm Lex Gillette, five-time Paralympic medalist, four-time world champion, and world record holder in the long jump for totally blind athletes. Running and jumping without your eyesight is one of the most incredible feelings out there. When I leave the ground, though, to, to jump and soar through the air and eventually land in the sand, that is my way of defying gravity. Big breath, get tight. Celebrating black history is very important, but I think that it, it certainly extends beyond just these 28 days. We need to get to a space where we are making this country a, a better space to live in. At the end of the day, it's not our eyes that ultimately determine success. It's our ability to see that vision, to develop that plan, connect with the right people, and do everything in your power to bring that vision into fruition. So I became a dentist because I just love science and I love art. I have a music background, so I wanted to do something that uh, I can use the hand dexterity that I've developed you know, through my musical training. We've had a practice in San Diego for 25 years. It's called the Super Dentist. For over two decades, I've had parents ask me the same questions on a daily basis. And so I decided to put all of this information in one place. I wrote a book, the title of it is If Your Mouth Could Talk. Because if your mouth could talk, it would tell you about the condition of your entire life. Right now, the oral care marketplace is a mess. And so we decided to launch a new company called Supermouth, which is a subscription model of oral care. And so we want to be proactively educating parents, providing the tools and the oral care products to make sure they can raise healthier, happier, more successful kids. The education piece is a key piece in our company because if you're educated as a parent, you're going to do the right things. People can find my book, uh, If Your Mouth Could Talk, themouthbook.com and purchase the book there and also get some special gifts to go along with the book. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. My name is Giovanni, and this is my mural. What intrigued me most about this project is that I realized there was not a lot of black street artists, and then there was not a lot of black art on walls. So that's what intrigues me the most, is that this is a project that's putting up multiple and plentiful walls of black people on walls. I'm Deborah, and this is my mural. When I was approached about this project as a portrait painter, I kind of like the idea of a challenge. I've done large scale pieces that were called murals, but I had never done an outdoor mural and I really love the subject matter. They didn't assign the, the subjects right off the bat. We had to kind of hear what they were gonna do. And I was thrilled. I got to pick it and this is the one that I was most happy with.
If you love animals, Animal Zone is for you. From rescues to animal experts, Animal Zone is fun for the whole family. Watch Animal Zone right here on your view, Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. And visit AnimalZone.org to learn more about this show. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 a.m. ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. This is a leak, and the...